Okay, so today I'm going to be demonstrating how to build the ultimate smart home voice assistant. What exactly is a ultimately smart voice assistant? Well, in my opinion, it is the ability for the voice assistant to speak to you anywhere you are in the house, even if music is playing or your TV is playing music. You should always be able to hear what the voice assistant wants to say. And likewise, you should be able to be anywhere in the house and you should be able to speak at a normal tone and the voice assistant should be able to hear you and your commands. It's almost like your assistant should be following you around the home and they can whisper into your ear and they can hear everything that you're saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you just say that you want Apple and Google and Amazon to listen to everything that I'm saying all the time? No, 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 no. So of course I don't want large corporations to be listening to everything that we're saying. In fact, the Home Assistant platform recently came out with their own voice assistant that they call Assist. And I will be using that in the future with ChatGPT and it's gonna be awesome. However, for today I'm going to be using Amazon Alexa and for the rest of the cancel, for the rest of the video, I'll be referring to her as Amanda so that doesn't happen. Okay, back to the video. The other thing that makes a voice assistant smart is yeah, you should be able to turn your lights on and off and lock doors and close garage doors and all that kind of stuff that we've all seen. But also the ultra smart voice assistant should be able to find you in any given room that you're in and then inform you of some event that may need your attention and ask for an action. And then you should be able to easily respond. So now you're not having to tell the voice assistant what to do. It could actually be reaching out to you and asking for your opinion on something. So stay tuned for this video. If you like it, please subscribe and let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are in my kitchen and living room area. And we have one, two in ceiling speakers above the kitchen and three, four speakers above the couch area and then a fifth center channel Sonos Arc speaker mounted below the television. Alexa, open Netflix on the living room TV. Getting Netflix from Nvidia Shield TV. So not only did she turn on my TV, but she also opened the app that I asked her to open. And uh, at this point you might wonder, Alexa, where is my living room remote? And so it's all the way over here which gives me the ability to demonstrate that Amanda can hear me no matter where I am in the room. Alexa, turn on the Christmas tree. All right, so anywhere I am in the room, she can hear me, even if uh, audio is playing through the speakers. So now let's uh, play something on the television. So this is playing through the entire room. And uh, now I could say, Alexa, shuffle Christmas music in the living room. Shuffling Christmas classics from Brad's Spotify on living room. All right, so fills up the entire room with audio, but she can still hear me. And when I speak, she turns the volume down. And when she speaks, she turns the volume down. So Alexa, set the oven to 350 degrees. Preheating kitchen oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for baking. Alexa, set the back patio lights to 100%. So now our back patio lights are on. Alexa, turn on the living room fan. Now the fan's on. And again, the audio is turning up and down automatically, so she can hear me. Um, Alexa, turn on the boy's camera. So now we're going to have a conversation. Sir, which TV should I show the boy's camera on? Living room, media room, or master bedroom? Living room. Dreaming boy's bedroom to living room TV. So that was an example of Amanda and I having a conversation and her asking me which TV do you know you want to play the camera in. So I could play any camera on any TV in the room. Uh, Alexa, lock the front door. Okay, hang on. The front door deadbolt is locked. Okay, I want to take a quick break to point out two really important things. One is that 
all of my devices are running locally here inside the home. So when I want to open my garage door or turn a light on or lock or unlock a door, all of these things are happening locally inside the home without an internet connection. So it is true that Amanda is recording my voice, going out to Amazon, and then coming back with the text, but I'm still doing all the controlling of the smart devices here in the home, which protects privacy. The second thing I wanna point out is that the Amanda that's built into Sonos has limitations to it. You can't do things like intercom between multiple rooms, and you can't do things like play Amanda's voice across five Sonos speakers in a room so that her voice fills up the room. And for those reasons, I decided to actually put a Amanda Echo in the ceiling and then to use an amplifier to route her voice all around the house in the right places. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Alexa, turn on the home theater. Okay, so now we can see that the home theater is booting up in another room. And this is actually a good opportunity to point out that there are four voice assistants in the ceiling all around the home and that you can actually intercom between these different rooms if you want to, which is really cool. So now let's go into an advanced voice automation. Okay, so here's a scenario where let's assume that my front door is open. It's been left open. What's gonna happen at the one minute mark is Amanda will track my watch. She'll figure out what room I'm in or my wife's watch. And she will announce in that particular room that the front door has been open for one minute. At the three minute mark, she will announce in all speakers across the entire home that the door has been open for three minutes. And at the five minute mark, she will again announce throughout the entire home and then turn the air conditioner off and turn the fans on and go into outdoor mode. So let's watch that. The front door has been open for one minute. Please close it. Great. So let's not close that door and let's wait for the three minute notification throughout the entire home that the front door is open. The front door has been open for three minutes. Please close it. So that voice notification happened everywhere in the entire home, but we're not going to close the front door. We're going to continue to leave it open to the five minute mark. The front door has been open for five minutes. Turning on outdoor mode. Yep, so in that case, you can see the fans were turned on and the air conditioner over here has been turned off, so we're not wasting power. Let's now uh, take a look at what happens with the garage door if I leave it open for five minutes. Alexa, open the garage door. Opening, hang on. The garage door is open. So we're getting close to the garage door's five minute mark, and you'll see that it finds me in this room and then asks me what I want to do about an open garage door. Excuse me, oh. but the garage door has been left open. Would you like me to close it? Yes. All right. Okay, close it. So that's the end of the video. Thank you very much. If you got this far for watching, I hope you'll consider subscribing. My future videos are gonna go much deeper into how I built these types of automations and these voice assistants. So please stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you for the time. See you soon. <laughs> it keeps following me. Uh, it's a feature, not a bug.